Uh, my name is Julia Krieger. I work on the Ironic Project. I am not the PTL. I'm going to stress that right now. <laughs> uh, but I'm here to give the project update. Uh, we have the former PTL in the room also, so if we have any questions. Actually, two former PTLs. You snuck in. I did. Um, so we can get questions answered if you have them. And feel free to stop me at any point in time and ask a question. So a quick little overview uh, suggested by the foundation was what, is, what does Ironic do? It's the bare metal service that we can use to deploy bare metal servers. It is a support of tools and libraries to facilitate the at, yeah, that deployment as opposed to physical machines. And we have a cute little bear as logo with drumsticks. Well, pixie boots, kind of. <laughs> Everyone's calling them pixie boots. Uh, a little bit of the background of the project. It was started during the Pan Havana cycle. During this last cycle, uh, we had 183 contributors to the project, up from 175 contributors the previous cycle. The cycles before that, 131, 121, and 100 contributors. So Ironic continues to grow from a contributor standpoint. From the user adoption or user survey, survey adoption numbers, the number of deployed clouds that have Ironic in production or test phase indicate that they are using Ironic 9% or testing, which is 13% of the clouds. Essentially, this tells us 29% of the user base is interested in using Ironic for some something, most likely deploying parallel servers. In this, in Pike, what we are going to be seeing is uh, Redfish, which RIT landed last week. It's basic support for powering on and setting the boot device. As time goes on, that will evolve more. Um, we have a link to the actual documentation that has been posted. The other major feature that you'll start to see from this cycle is called driver composition, which is an the ability to define the specific interface, interfaces you wish to use for your hardware. Traditionally, we, if we had a driver that would, be, that would represent using iSCSI deployment and Pixie booting and some, other, some power interface. Well, now you, we just have hardware profiles, and it's a hardware profile and a number of selectable interfaces as some of these hardware profiles do support multiple types of interfaces for power control. In that case, it might be a, uh, the case where you have policy that says you cannot run IPMI, but you could run Redfish probably. So that might be useful for some operators in the room. We also can now attach VIF interfaces to running machines as when they're deployed. This seems like a minor change, but it is a, actually a fairly major change in terms of allowing you to use additional resources on the node in terms of network interfaces while it's already online. So I'm having trouble hearing you. Um, yeah, the question is, do you already have drivers for the VIF interface? For the VIF interface. For the interface. If you support attachments, then it's a bare metal node. I'm guessing you are looking into macro cards with load loading or points. So the network interface actually attaches the, it's a port attachment to Neutron. So it's calling Neutron to yeah, so achieve it's, attachment. It's Did everyone get that? 
Okay, moving on. For the additional features for Pike that we're hoping to get out the door right now are rolling upgrades and boot from volume. The rolling upgrades will support zero downtime upgrades, and that is presently in, in flight and expected to land this cycle. Boot from volume is a little more complex since it's integrating Cinder into the life of a machine, potentially. And that is a little, little bit more at risk of landing the cycle. It might not land. Some of it has already landed, but it's, it's a work in progress. Here we have an example of driver composition. And this is the biggest change a user will notice. On here, you can see we have now have a boot interface, a deploy interface, a console interface, a driver which is actually the hardware type in this case, an inspection interface, management interface, and network power interfaces, and RAID interfaces, and as well as a vendor interface. Essentially what this allows us to do is allows you to build a custom node of varying drivers. So if you don't want to use the IPMI driver, or you know you have to use the IPMI driver and not the ILO power driver, then you can change it out. It's up to the operator. Any questions? Awesome. For VIF interfaces, this is an example of attaching a VIF interface. You can see that. Um, we have a port assigned for a node. You can see with this command that we've listed the VIFs, and that that's the UID for the VIF. And that here's the UID for the port, and that the port status is down. In this sc screenshot, we can see that we are attaching the VIF. And down here, you can see that the same port, the same por port ID, is now active. So essentially what would happen is Ironic's telling Neutron to remove the network connection, and then you just hold it to put the network connection back in place. We use this in our uh, cleaning logic and deployment logic so that as a node is moving through its life cycle, the ports are removed and plugged back in. So now a user can do it. Moving forward, uh, we have themes. Right now, we have a major focus on resiliency, manageability, and modularity, as well as interoperability. The user interface is, a main, is more of a minor focus, and maybe that's mainly a resource issue at this time. For Queens, we're not 100% sure what we're going to see. We're hoping the major focus will be interoperability, manageability, and user experience, but it's a little too early to tell. In regards for enhancements for Queens, most likely what we will see is routed network support. The physical network awareness, which is needed, is it? The awareness is needed for, I should have listed these, listed these in reverse, sorry. But um, one is to allow us to know how the network is architected or, and connected. The other allows us to understand how, the, how and facilitate the network connectivity for deploying of nodes in that environment. And then we're hoping to get rescue mode picked back up um, for Queens. It uh, unfortunately fell victim to the uh, OIC impact. For Rocky, we haven't talked about it yet. <laughs> if anyone has any suggestions, we're absolutely here to listen. And we do need your help. Op Ironic is an operator-centric project. Reviews from operators are just as vital as reviews from developers to us. We, we gain insight by your operational experience, and that helps us make better decisions and plan in a more efficient manner. The impact of OSIC has helped, has hurt us like many other projects. And right now, we don't know the full impact. 
we probably won't know the full impact for a couple months at this point. But we are reprioritizing our priorities so that we can attempt to get more done, even though we've lost some people in the process. Other things we can use help with is third-party CI. And it is honestly amazing what you can see happen if resources are donated to developers that don't actually have them. <laughs> so if anyone wants to, to volunteer some lab time to an ironic developer, that would help us quite a bit. Any questions? I would think it varies based on, well, the question was, what kind of lab time is needed? Uh, because the microphone probably didn't hear. I think it would vary based upon network architectures that are in use or desired. So Sam could probably use a very complex network for a couple days. I could probably use a different uh, controller management interfaces. Uh, things that we don't normally get in having a server in our closet at home which is what most of us have <laughs> if we have anything beyond virtual machines. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, if you had a, a list uh, of needs, like a shared Google Sheet or something, that mm -hmm. might help with some of the other, some of us, maybe we can find a way to try and help you out with that. That would be a good idea. We should do that. Thank you. Hi. Um, so about driver composition, do you have to define each and every interface for each and every node, or do you define a kind of node type and then apply it to the nodes? You define a node type instead of a driver. So the node types have a list of drivers defined, or sub-interface drivers, as it, we're calling them, or interfaces, that the hardware type knows to support. And depending on if those types are enabled in the conductor or not enabled, it will choose the, the available drivers and use them. Yes. OK. And uh, another question. You talk mostly about pure ironic functionality. Is there any new cha uh, big changes in IPA or the inspector? In inspector, I'm not aware of any. Okay, thanks. Regarding IPA, uh, which was another thing, item that was asked, I believe that we will not be seeing any features for, in IPA anytime soon. So, any more questions? Well, I feel like I have a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, I noticed uh, in IPA, someone was trying to change the RAM disk from tiny IPA to something else. Uh, Chris Smart, I believe, uh, the name. Yeah, uh, so there, there are several ways of building an ironic Python agent image today. Two supported in the ironic Python agent repository. There's tiny IPA, which is a tiny polymorph based distribution, um, and a core OS based distribution. Both have advantages and disadvantages. Um, they're also unsupported um, because we don't test it. Uh, the ability to use the disk image builder to produce an ironic Python agent image, uh, which gives you a few more options. Um, Basically, uh, 
Jim, do we have a list of Thank you. things that have been dropped? Okay. 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 Any other questions? questions, I guess, uh, since nobody has any other technical questions, it seems. Um, so one of the things I've noticed, I've been using the networking uh, generic switch mm -hmm. uh, setup, and I've noticed there if I define a machine with two network interfaces, but then when the user creates a, a server, only defines one, it sometimes leaves the other network interface still in the, in the previous VLAN. Is that a, a known... So the, that is essentially going to be a known thing. Okay. The networking generic switch is really just intended for testing. Yeah, so I should use um, something else probably. Probably. Okay. There are also some things we need to look, probably look at with networking generic switch to make it a little more friendlier and have a little more control over that. Um, but that's going to require some planning on our part and figure out where the bounds are okay. with that, because we should be asserting expected state, and maybe there's a middle ground for us with bare metal that we need to think about. Okay, so what would be a better option to, to use? Depending on, depending on what hardware you have, This was just our first lap test, uh, mm -hmm. so that's why we use this one. Uh, uh, different question is, how, how do you keep the end users out of the IPMI in-band? Uh, <laughs> some machines have a BIOS setting to turn off that okay. band access. Mm -hmm. I was more concerned about basically the user locking the system out of accessing power control. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs>